Welcome to Grandpa's Garage, part two. Uh, today we're going to do a little section on glues because we use quite a lot of different glue in the automotive industry from everything from engine repairs all the way through to trim repairs, roof, headlining, seats, all this kind of stuff. So we're going to cover a few of the different glues that are available to you. Uh, so bear with me and take notes. Okay, well, here's a few different glues that I have in my workshop. Uh, and they vary from epoxy paste all the way through to super glues. Uh, so probably it's best if we start off with super glue. Uh, super glue uh, was invented actually by the Goodrich company who used to actually make the brake lines, made tires and all kinds of stuff. Uh, they discovered it in about 1947 and they ended up selling it to Loctite because they didn't really have any um, reason to kind of keep it. This is the stuff I use. Uh, this stuff works immediately. It touches any kind of water. Uh, there is actually a special solvent that you can use to set it off even harder. Uh, but water initially sets it off. Its actual chemical name, I'm going to try and say this, is crinocrylate acid. And this stuff, let me tell you, is sticky. Uh, they discovered during the Vietnam War that this stuff could be very useful in the place of stitches when people had bad cuts and this kind of thing. So it saved quite a few lives. Uh, the only real nasty thing from it is that it does actually give off a funny smell and it's not very good because it actually gives you flu-like symptoms if you're exposed to it too much. Uh, I found this out for myself. Uh, this one actually is called Instacure and it's a super thin glue. Uh, I have stuck my fingers together with this stuff many a time. Uh, there's another type of this stuff that you can get, the gold, uh, and it really works well with plastics and works really well with things like styrofoam uh, because it doesn't burn, doesn't get quite as hot as the, the other stuff. Now it comes in different viscosities. For those of you that know what viscosity means, you'll already know that it means the pourability. The blue stuff is really thin, the gold stuff is really thin, but you can actually get uh, super glue that's fairly thick uh, so it stays in place. These little ones here uh, are made by Loctite and I get these from the dollar store. There's about enough in here to probably I can rebuild uh, a dashboard with one of these if it's got holes in it and stuff like that. Uh, but they don't last very long once you've opened the canister because if you let air get to it, it tends to destroy it. Uh, now you're probably wondering at this point, how do you get the stuff unstuck? And let me tell you, over the years, people have stuck various body parts to other body parts, stuck their fingers to cups and saucers and all this kind of stuff. Well, it's worth you knowing. This is the super solvent remover. And all it quite literally is, is nail varnish remover. Uh, it's called acetone or acetone, acetone. Don't get the non-acetone type. Uh, about a week ago, I stuck my two fingers together like this, and I couldn't find this stuff. I walked around for half an hour with my fingers stuck together. Kind of embarrassing. I couldn't tell my wife, of course, uh, but I finally found it. Uh, pretty good stuff. The only other thing about this stuff is there's this Instaset. Uh, I'm going to give you a little demonstration on how quick this works. Super glue has a tendency to not go hard or set very quickly on certain materials. Like if you were trying to repair a, a light lens, a uh, brake light lens or something like that. Uh, I was told many years ago that if you coat the lens where the crack is with a little bit of spit, a little bit of water or saliva, and then put the glue on, it'll then stick way better than it will if you don't have anything on. Well, this stuff is basically a mixture of water, baking soda, if mixed up, and you squirt this on the stuff and it goes super hard, super instantly. Uh, they call it an accelerator, and of course it's compatible with foams and plastics for when you're doing 
things like dashboard repairs and things like that but anyway there's the accelerator you can get most of these things from any hardware store I happen to get mine from the hobby shop uh, really kind of useful thing okay move on to the next one Next, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about rubber solution. Uh, rubber solution is otherwise known as vulcanizing cement. Uh, this stuff is actually solid rubber that's been dissolved into acetone, a little bit of chloroform, and maybe a little bit of benzene as well. Now, you can imagine all those chemicals are not very nice together. Uh, this stuff works as a glue for repairing tires and inner tubes and punctures and this kind of thing. And it's absolutely great as long as you use it in an area where there's plenty of air. If you breathe this stuff in, it will quite literally put you in hospital and can cause brain damage. It really is not a good combination. Uh, but unfortunately, a lot of chemicals that we use in automotive do have that kind of effect. Uh, you just have to be educated on the things, uh, know where uh, uh, they can be used and where they can't be used. Now obviously it's very volatile as well, uh, so if with chloroform in it, an acetone makes it very, very flammable. So you can have no business smoking or have any open flames anywhere near this stuff because it will go up in a heartbeat. One of the things it puts out in the solvent is pure hydrogen and most of you probably know how quick hydrogen catches fire because I've shown you. Uh, it's what's known as a contact adhesive. Uh, you'd smear a little bit of this solution onto your inner tube or inside of your tire and then you'd put one of the patches on it. But you have to wait in between until the glue becomes tacky to the touch. A little bit like a stick it note. And when it does, you can then apply the patch to the repair and uh, it takes around about 15 minutes for it to go completely hard. Uh, but usually... Uh, when it does go hard they're not usually any problem as long as you have the surface clean when you start. Uh, it's, the repair procedure is called vulcanizing and I looked up what vulcanizing actually meant because I didn't know and it means high temperature hardening of rubber so it's obviously some kind of chemical reaction. Originally it was come up with for sticking rubber to solid steel uh, in tanks and things like that in the Second World War. So now we know a little bit more about vulcanizing cement. Uh, keep the lid on it because it'll evaporate very fast. Okay, next is good old Elmer's glue. Uh, this one's actually called tight bond. It's not Elmer's glue. Uh, woodworking glue, if you want to call it that. Uh, made by a company called the Cassian Company in about 1946. Uh, it's a resin-based glue. Uh, and it's for wood and trim. Uh, believe it or not, the high quality cars uh, that you may well get to work on have wooden dashboards. And sometimes if there's any damage, this is the glue we use for it. It bonds normally stronger than the material that you're trying to stick uh, because it's a plastic based glue. Uh, it seems like the tighter you clamp the two pieces together, the better this glue works. Now you may be just wondering at this point how long it takes to go hard. Normally around about 24 hours, so you need to have a little bit of time to let this happen. Uh, I find in my model making and the general use of this using wood, that this is absolutely fabulous and way better than most of the epoxy resins that I'm going to talk about because it makes a better bond. Uh, to get it unstuck, you end up having to actually use heat to unstick it because uh, the resin actually melts when you heat it up. Uh, very similar kind of glue to they used to use when they built guitars and violins and cellos during uh, years gone by. Uh, only the glues they used were actually made from boiling bones of old animals, horses and pigs, and they'd make this glue that would work in a very similar way. It would bring out resins out of the bones and all this kind of thing. Uh, as soon as you heat it up and get it nice and hot, it'll melt and it'll come apart, as will a violin or a cello. If you heat it up, put boiling water in it, it'll just quite literally fall apart into its component parts. Uh, 
So anyway, it's a useful glue to have around. I don't use it for things like gaskets or anything, but any kind of repairs where I don't know quite what to use and don't want to make a mess because this stuff uh, actually dries clear. Uh, this is my choice. Uh, moving on, uh, we were talking just a second ago about epoxy. Uh, epoxy resin. Uh, this one's actually a Devcon plastic welder and it's actually a chemical combination of two forms of plastic and when they hit each other they create heat and when the heat actually is created it makes a molecular bond between the two chemicals and finally it turns into a hard plastic. This particular one actually is designed for repairing plastic, things like door handles. Uh, if you can't get one for a customer, it's probably a good idea to repair it so the windows and all the doors do actually open. So this is one I particularly like, the plastic welder. This one actually uh, dries in a cream color because I was repairing a cream dashboard for this a little while back. There's one or two other ones. Uh, this one, the HFT, comes from the dollar store, believe it or not. And I have great success in repairing things like wing mirrors, uh, driver's door mirrors, and all this kind of thing with this stuff. Uh, it's one dollar. How, how far wrong can you go for a dollar? Uh, it normally takes around about 15 minutes uh, to actually go semi-hard. Uh, this stuff is what they call five minute epoxy. It means you have to position it into whatever shape you need it into within five minutes because it starts to go gel like and then starts to get harder. Uh, and this is a 50 50 mix. So you put a little worm line of the resin, a little worm line of the hardener, and you mix it with a matchstick and then you apply it to whatever you're trying to stick. Be warned that it does stink. So if you're going to use it in your mum's kitchen, <laughs> and I'm sure you probably aren't. Uh, you probably ought to do it outside or in a garage or in a hallway outside or something. Uh, it's kind of an eye irritant as well, so make sure when you touch this, you don't touch your eyes afterwards because uh, it could end up putting you in hospital. Uh, it's really nasty if you swallow it. It doesn't just hurt, it will kill you. So you don't want to be eating it, keep it away from children. Works on just about anything, metals, ceramics i even had a version of this uh, that you call here in the united states called jb weld i'm sure you've heard of that it's another 50 50 epoxy uh, i think in the rest of the world they called it araldite uh, and i think that was who actually invented it, a company called araldite from ireland believe it or not uh, the first time i came across this somebody had actually broken a piston through the side of an engine and it had broken a hole actually in the engine block. Now I couldn't believe that that was going to be reused again. Uh, but the guy I was working with said, oh no, he said, uh, we'll repair that with some JB Weld or Araldite as he called it. He said, we get it all super clean. We'll clean it with alcohol, rubbing alcohol. Uh, and then we'll put it on there and we'll stick it on there overnight. And you know, the vehicle he did that on was the works truck. Uh, so he didn't have any warranty issues with it. But he did that repair, and when that engine was put back together, I was at that company for another 10 years, and that vehicle was still running after I left. So I guess it works. Uh, you just have to make sure there's no oil on it when you actually do it. I would just say one thing about this, that it's very brittle. So if you're doing anything that flexes and moves a lot, it's probably not a good stuff to use. What I used to do is I would find uh, some either wire mesh or some kind of meshed cloth or something and then I'd actually put that in between if I was going to actually do any kind of repair on a flat surface that moves. So it has a little flexibility. But in general this stuff is not very flexible. Uh, any others I can think of, they come in different brands. Goop is one of the favourite ones a few years ago. Uh, and it's more like a paste. It's called Super Mend Goop. And this stuff you can just about fix anything with. Uh, it does go hard after a few years. So you need to keep the lids on if you're going to store it. Uh, pretty good stuff. The other one I, I favoured a lot was PC7. Uh, very heavy duty. Again, 50-50. Uh, 
you just open the lids and you mix it together like a paste and it will stick just about anything to anything uh, awesome stuff uh, probably this type of epoxy is the sort that you'll see most commonly uh, I buy these in medium sized tubs and again one of them is the epoxy itself you can see that probably and it says epoxy hardener on this one and 50 50 uh, I'm going to show you one or two of these actually work and I'll show you what happens when you mix the chemicals uh, so bear with me uh, I don't think there's too many others uh, that we use Gorilla Glue is one that I kind of like but I only like the foaming Gorilla Glue uh, because it fills in gaps when things break because when you actually glue with this stuff it expands and it's almost like a foam it's not very pretty but it glues very very well uh, for things like plastics and card and dashboard dents and things like that kind of cool for that uh, so I like to use that it's called Gorilla White uh, the other stuff that Gorilla makes isn't really quite as good. It's a lot harder. It does expand and fills in the gaps, but it's a devil of a job to get a clean up afterwards. It's a real mess. Uh, I think finally there's this one, the Fix It All Adhesive. Uh, very similar to vulcanizing cement. You've probably seen stuff like this when you made your model aeroplanes or model cars out of airfix kits and things like that. You probably don't even know what they are. The plastic kits uh, that you can make models with. Uh, this is pretty good stuff. Again, it's highly flammable and it stinks and it's very nasty if you eat it. So keep it away from children. Uh, this is a similar thing made by Elmer's Glue. Uh, I use quite a lot of this because it doesn't damage any of the plastics I work with. Uh, we're going to move on in a minute or two over to uh, other types of glues that we use in engines and see you in a second. Now the word aerobic means that it sets in the presence of oxygen. Now if it doesn't need oxygen to set they call it anaerobic. anaerobic. Uh, so if you were squeezing some of this stuff in between two metal surfaces like let's say a valve cover and the top of the cylinder head on an engine this stuff would probably never harden because it needs oxygen to go hard. Now there are some gasket sealers and they're all types of glue uh, that are designed specifically for being clamped in between metal surfaces and don't need any oxygen to go off so they're all called anaerobic sealers and there's such a big list of these things it's unbelievable uh, so the only other thing I would mention about the engine sealers things like instant gasket and I'm sure you know what we're talking about there uh, it's a replacement for gaskets uh, is that it can be messy and the other big thing about it is that it has to be what's called sensor safe. Uh, a lot of the older engine repair glues, instant gaskets, had what was called acetic acid inside it. Now acetic acid is another name for vinegar. If you go into one of the fish shops here, uh, it's just the same stuff that's in malt vinegar. And it is really not very friendly to any of your sensors on the car. It'll kill the oxygen sensor. It'll kill your mass airflow sensor. And since both of those are a couple of hundred bucks a piece, uh, we can't afford to do that very often. So make sure if you use any of these on your modern car, this is a car post 1975, anything after 75, make sure you use uh, the sealers that are sensor safe and make sure they're either aerobic or anaerobic depending on what the job is you want to do so I'm going to ask you about that in our little quiz uh, so aerobic means that it needs air to set and anaerobic means that it doesn't need any air to set glues in general are not a new thing uh, they go back as far as 200,000 years would you believe uh, the ancients used to bo boil up animal bones that would become sticky if you left them in the pot long enough and use those to stick clothes together uh, in the 14 1500s they used it to make violins you've all heard of the Stradivarius they were put together using a horsehide glue uh, very good glues but the problem with those for any other thing that we use them for is that when you heat these up 
the first time to make a solution to make the glue is a very strong super hard glue but the second time you heat it up if you let it cool down overnight and heat it again it becomes less strong and the more you heat it up the less strong it becomes until it becomes almost worthless uh, so we've come up with all these synthetic glues for different things uh, that's about all I've got on glues, I think, at this point. I'm just going to set up for a demo and we're away. Okay, we're back. Uh, the first glue I'm going to show you is this stuff called Weld Bond. I think it's pretty good stuff. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, the main important thing is on the bottom here is the fact that it's non-toxic. We like non-toxic glues. This this is kind of what it looks like. It's kind of a white, almost like a kid's glue, like you'd use in playgroup or kindergarten as a kiddo. Uh, it takes about 24 hours to go off. Uh, I say to go off, that's kind of a British phrase. It means to go hard. Uh, one of the other ones here I'm going to show you, of course, is super glue. Uh, I'm going to actually put a little tiny bit of this super glue on my fingers. Just to show you how sticky this stuff is. Oh, look, I'm stuck. Oh, dear. Now, how would you get that off now? That's the question. Uh, if you'd stuck your fingers to your eyelids, that would be an embarrassing thing. So here we go. We actually have here some super solvent. Now, this had better work. Put a little bit of solvent on there. And just cover your fingers in it. And after a few seconds, this stuff just quite literally melts off of your hand. It's just totally awesome. Uh, this is refillable. Smell wise, ooh, it's acetone. <coughs> <laughs> it makes you cough. Probably not good stuff. But it's turned the super glue into like a goo gooey, jello kind of icky stuff. It's no longer a glue. So that's how you get this stuff off. And it will stick to just about anything. I'm going to try and give you a quick demo here on a couple of sticks here to glue these together. And we'll put a little bit of glue on the first stick like so now this stuff as I said it doesn't like some materials very well that it's not stuck but the moment I get some of this stuff the insta set spray it on there it should stick put a little bit on first and then a little bit of glue Oop. And now it will stick pretty much instantly. Now it's a really decent glue set. Uh, what this leaves behind this super glue is kind of a hard plastic. Uh, I think it's a pretty decent joint. It's okay for repairing most things. Uh, but this stuff is really a, a must have with the super glue if you're going to keep some in your toolbox. Uh, so there we go. That's that type of glue. This, this is the Gorilla Glue. Uh, it's just a clear liquid uh, there it is coming out onto there you can see it when it actually goes hard it starts to foam up uh, kind of an odd kind of stuff really like that for a lot of repairs where things are actually broken uh, you're not too worried about the way they look after they're done it's a temporary repair glue uh, this is just the regular glue. I'm not going to open these because once they're open, they start to evaporate. I will actually show you one or two of the little epoxies here. Uh, this stuff is really pretty good. Let's move this one out of the way. Uh, you have to give these things a little bit of a shake to get the glue to come out. This one I'm putting down first is actually the epoxy hardener. Now this is well, this one I'm telling a lie here is the actual resin itself and this one is the hardener 
and what I'll do is put the same amount next to it. Now the thing is the more hardener you add to this the hotter this will actually become and the quicker it will go hard. Uh, I'm just quite literally mixing this stuff uh, and it stays as a liquid for around about 15 minutes in the case of this one. Uh, I like to have the option to move things around a little bit. It's already started to thicken because I put a little bit more hardener in it. Uh, years and years ago we used to actually work with fiberglass in a boatyard where I worked and sometimes they want to do a quick repair using fiberglass. Now fiberglass is a mixture of this type of epoxy resin and fiber matting to give things actual strength and they used to mix a pot of this stuff they'd have a pot of resin about this much and then they put about this much hardener in it and the chemical reaction would make this resin go so hot that it would quite literally start to get to the point where you couldn't even hold the container so you had to use this stuff really fast for repairing a hole in the side of a boat or repairing the hole somewhere now this has started to go hard already uh, I'd give this around about 10 or 15 minutes and it'll be so hard that I won't even be able to get this drinking straw off of here uh, it's kind of a funny color this stuff is kind of a yellowy color uh, you can get it in different colors uh, clear cream now the JB weld let's move on to this one uh, is two chemicals again I don't know if you can see this but here is a little blob of the white stuff this is the actual hardener and I was warned years ago that this hardener uh, on all these epoxies you have to wash your hands thoroughly when you've actually worked with these because some of them are carcinogenic not all of them are uh, but because you're not sure on each one I would treat each one as though it is carcinogenic that means cancer causing in case you wonder uh, you put equal amounts again on this stuff and I don't touch this stuff or at least I try not to and I'll mix the black and the white together and of course you know what happens when you black mix black and white together you get grey now this stuff, if I leave it sitting here overnight, will become like a piece of rock. What I'm going to do is I'm probably going to just stick this to here and we'll leave them overnight. Oh look, the other glue is starting to go hard now. Now if I leave these both overnight, I won't be able to get these off here at all. Uh, I'll end up tearing the card off my little table here. Uh, there's going to be a little quiz attached to this because I want you to know uh, what these are and what their uses are and also one or two of the health concerns with them uh, which I'll just kind of cover now uh, the acetone for releasing the super glue is fine as long as you don't eat it make sure you wash your hands afterwards I would always consider epoxies the hardeners and the epoxy as being poisonous so again wash your hands if you end up getting any of this stuff in your eyes you need to go to the hospital if you get any on your hands and into your mouth you need to go to the hospital uh, with this stuff they say don't make the patient throw up because it can make it even worse uh, i would definitely say that prolonged use on this stuff is not going to be good for you so use it in an area where there's plenty of air flowing in my little shop here i've got a fan going all the time uh, this stuff, uh, the Insta set for the super glue, I think I'd be a little careful with that. It can cause problems with your breathing, so you need to spray a tiny amount of it in a good area again. And if you start eating it, and it will make you nauseous, and then you end up again in the hospital again. Uh, let's just double check these. The goop stuff, uh, it's unlikely that you're going to end up trying to eat it. But if you do, it's a killer. Nasty stuff. It's got all kinds of evil stuff in it. Five different phone calls you can make on this stuff. And you need to let them know uh, what you've taken. First thing you do is you flush your eyes with water. Uh, get medical attention immediately is what they're saying. Uh, pretty much that's it. Apart from just a reminder that the super glues, the vapors that they give off, can give you flu symptoms 
and they will make you feel sick. Uh, so be very careful that you don't breathe in the fumes from this stuff. They all have their place and I must say I use glues a whole lot. Uh, I'll just quickly show you the super duper hot glue gun. Uh, I love this hot glue gun. This one uh, came from I think Amazon and it's got two different heats. It's got a 50, uh, 150 watt and 70 watt and it improves the viscosity of it the hotter it is but bear in mind that it is a hot glue gun and it will burn you uh, my grandson learned oh two years ago when he was five how hot a hot glue gun is because he was treating it like everything else they do at that age and he got some on his fingers and oh scream you don't want to go there uh, and now he won't use the hot glue gun at all uh, he's been scarred i believe this one came from Amazon, I think it was about 20 bucks. Uh, these hot glue sticks are not created equal. Uh, you can get some in Hobby Lobby uh, that are extra, extra strong hot glue. Uh, the usual ones you, you buy are for things like uh, paper, cardboard, but the super heavy duty ones take longer to heat up, so you do it on 150 watts uh, to make it thin enough to use. And then you can stick plastics and steel and everything you can think of together with this. Uh, really a useful tool. I'd advise that you definitely get one. Uh, apart from that, I think that's all I've got on this. Uh, there'll be a little quiz. And I'm going to ask you to do maybe a little research on glues this week. Uh, if anybody's interested, uh, here's my latest aircraft I built this week. It's a humongous glide, powered glider called a Sky Surfer and I'm going to try it and fly it uh, when the wind cuts down. Well, apart from that, it's Grandpa's Garage out for another week. Have a good week, guys.